In this video, we're going to solve example problem 2.1, determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. As you can recall from the previous video, the two common problems encountered in statics include finding the resultant force, as indicated in this question, and resolving a known force into components, which would be the opposite of this. So let's start off by using the procedure for analysis. The first step would be to look at the problem and to understand the question. So in this question, he wants us to determine the forces F1, F1, and F2, and to determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. The first step in the procedure for analysis would be to make a sketch, in other terms to make a free body diagram showing the vector addition using the parallelogram law. So we start by drawing the axes, the x-axis, and the y-axis, and we draw the two force vectors along with their angles. And then we make a sketch showing the vector addition using the parallelogram law. And if you can recall, two component forces add according to the parallelogram law, yielding a resultant force that forms the diagonal. So let's go ahead and draw the resultant force for this question. So to this color. All right, so the resultant force would be as follows. If we can draw, let's use this color. First, let's draw the forces adding up to form the diagonal. So two components add up to form a resultant force, which would be the diagonal of this parallelogram law. As you can see, I've just constructed a parallelogram, and the resultant force would be the diagonal of this parallelogram. Now, the parallelogram law of addition is shown in this figure. Now the two unknowns would be the magnitude of FR, let's call this, first of all let's call this F1 and this F2. The resultant force we call FR. And remember that every vector has a magnitude and direction. And the two unknowns in this question would be the magnitude of FR and the angle theta. So let's call this angle theta. And at the same time, let's call this angle from the x-axis phi. Okay, so using a little bit of trigonometry, the vector triangle here can be constructed. Now, the resultant is determined by using the law of cosines. So fr would be equal to square root of a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c in this case. If you don't remember that, let me draw that triangle again. If you have a triangle like this, and let's call this a, b, c with the angles corresponding the sides. The sine law which states a over sine a equals to b over sine b, which is equal to c over sine c. And the cosine law states c is equal to square root of a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. So in this case, let's try to solve this problem by using trigonometry. a squared plus b squared would be 100 newton plus 150 newton. 100 newton plus 150 newton. As you can see, this forms a triangle. 
So this is one of the sides, let's call this side A, and this would be side B, so that's 150, and this is, no, this is 150, and this is 100. So 100 Newton squared plus 150 Newtons squared minus 2 times 100 Newtons times 150 Newtons cosine C. In this case, C would be 115. Why? Because if you look at this, this triangle over here, this side C, in this case the resultant, if you flip it upside down, you can understand that this is the same as this. C is equal to the resultant, and we have to find this angle, which means we have to find this angle over here. And by using a little bit of trigonometry, we can. All right, let's solve this for, for now. You can see that this is angle 15, and this angle over here would be equal to 90 degrees minus 25 degrees, which is equal to 65 degrees. Why? Because this is a right angle. The x and y axes intersect each other to form a right angle and you can subtract 90 degrees minus 25 degrees. Why? Because this is 10 degrees and this is 15 degrees, so what's left is 25. 90 minus 25, which is equal to 65 degrees. So this angle over here would be 65 degrees. Very simple, just using trigonometry. And in order to find this angle over here, we can say 360 degrees minus 2 times 65 degrees divided by 2, which is equal to 115 degrees. Why? Again, using trigonometry. If you recall that all, parallelogram, uh, all parallelograms add up to form, the angles inside the parallelograms add up to form 360 degrees, and in this case we have this angle which is 65 degrees and all of these angles here add up to form 360 degrees. So 360 degrees minus 2 times 65 degrees divided by 2, because these are also equal, that will give you 115 degrees. All right, so now let's calculate the value of FR. So FR is equal to the square root of 100 newtons squared plus 150 newtons squared minus 2 times 100 newtons times 150 newtons times cosine 115 degrees. So let's go ahead and calculate that. One hundred newtons squared is equal to ten thousand plus one hundred fifty newtons squared would be equal to twenty-two thousand five hundred minus two times one hundred two hundred times one hundred and fifty would be two hundred times one hundred and fifty thirty thousand times, let's put those in parentheses, times cosine 115 degrees, cosine 115, that would be negative 0 0.4, negative 0 0.4226. All right, let's go ahead and calculate this value. 10,000 plus 22,500 minus 30,000 times negative 0 0.4226. And let's take the square root of that answer. The answer is equal to 212.55. Round that off to three significant figures. It would be 213 newtons. Now the angle theta is determined by applying the law of sines, the law of sines using the computed value of FR. So FR 
is equal to 213 newtons. Remember that the cosine law is used to find the magnitude and the sine law is used to find the direction. All right, now let's try to find the angle theta, which would give you the direction for this problem. But before we do that, let me clarify a little bit more how we got FR and now how we're going to get uh, theta by using the triangle construction, which would make it easier to understand. So let's say that this is FR again, same pen. And this would be F1. And this one over here is F2. I'm just taking this portion right here from the parallelogram, the triangle construction, the second method. And these are the angles again, 115 degrees. This is FR. This is F1. And this is F2. And of course, F2 would be equivalent to this component over here, so that would be 150, because here F2 is equal to 150 newtons, and F1 is equal to 100 newtons, so here F2 would be equal to 150 newtons, and F1 is equal to 100 newtons. And regarding the angles, this is the x-axis, uh, as indicated by the question, this was given to be 15 degrees from the x-axis to F1, and we said theta would be this one over here, whereas phi would be from the x-axis all the way to fr. And as you can see from the law of sines, from this triangle over here, a over sine a is equal to b over sine b, which is equal to c over sine c. So fr here represents c, which is the resultant. C over sine C would be FR over the corresponding angle, which would be, in this case, 115. That is the corresponding angle for, for the resultant. So we say FR over 115, sine 115. And FR in this problem was 212.6, but we rounded that off to 213 newtons. But we're going to take 212.6 for more accuracy, and we say 212.6 newtons divided by sine 115. And now let's try to find theta, which is this angle over here, which represents this one. And let's say that 150 newtons is divided by sine theta. So 150 newtons divided by sine theta is equal to 212.6 newtons divided by sine 115 degrees, the triangle construction. This would give you, if you carry out the calculations, it would give you, let's see, 150 times 0 0.9063 divided by 212.6, that would give you 0. 0.6394, and let's take the sine inverse of this, and that would give you 39.75. Let's round that off to 39.8 degrees. We can conclude from all of this that the direction phi, now let's, let's find phi. Phi of FR, which would be from the x-axis all the way to FR, from the x-axis all the way to FR, is measured from the horizontal. And this would be equal to 39.8 degrees, which is this one over here, simply plus, what's left, you guessed it, 15 degrees, and that would give you 39.8 plus 15 degrees, 54.8. Degrees. And that's just about it. The problem is easy to solve. You just have to follow the steps and you need to know the procedure for analysis. Understand the parallelogram law and apply the principles of the parallelogram law. Revise some of the concepts of trigonometry. You have to know the sine law and the cosine law to solve this. 
the sine law is used to find the angle, and the cosine law is used to find the resultant, the magnitude of the resultant force.